Prepare for battle. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, okay. Just a buck. Just a buck. <laughs> I was like, my, my in-game speaker wasn't wasn't showing up, so... Um, but yeah, the mid breathe the Mother, I've seen a couple times. It, it, I believe the first time I saw it was South American Dota. Like, that, that was actually being run uh, a decent amount in uh, the South American scene, and I think they've kind of gotten over it. I, I haven't seen it lately, but then again, I haven't been casting too many of the Americas games, but... Uh, I think they've gotten over it, but now this Burn United grabbing the Brood Mother shows that even across the regions, it does have uh, players are playing around with the idea of the mid Brood Mother. But hey, I am just still not convinced. Even though I think I've seen it from now three different regions: South America, Southeast mm -hmm. Asia, and now Europe. Damn. I, th I think it's pretty situational. It really comes down to the matchup. The, what they could do here is essentially tax the Wisp in terms of his early items because of the Broodmother. The, the value of the Broodmother is that you have to commit so much to actually killing him off. Uh, so we see Sentry Ward's already up for the Wisp, but that means that Io doesn't get to rush his bottle. Even if he gets a Bounty Rune at level 1, the bottle's going to be pretty delayed, and Tiny's going to have less spells to work with. But um, we're going to see a nice little Ice Shard play here from Big Num. Will secure in the Bounty Rune, and that's going to be two Bounty Runes for Burden United, so already a nice little startup for them. Mind Control, halfway to level 2, very important for the Broodmother, uh, getting those early levels. So uh, this is going to be enabling him to fight out against the Wind Ranger quite effectively. Um, he should be able to predict the damage coming in from Power Shot. He won't be feeding too many spiders here to the Wind Ranger, unless that he also gets ganks coming in. Zenigata will come in. I uh, was considering the Century Ward play, but you also have to remember the risk of centering against the Broodmother in 6.84. She has tangos at the ready. She can drop her own sentry the second that she knows it's there and actually tango that sentry before you get the chance. And that just gives her that boost of base fear regen and takes away your detection advantage in the mid lane. Yeah, I was uh, just going to, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like I was going to ask you if you think that that change has actually brought Broodmother. Um, potentially not like back in the meta because he was kind of always there. He was always a nice like surprise fifth pick, but I, I really feel like it makes the Broodmother like so much stronger in the laning phase than than previously. Just because if you bring two counters, like you can easily, 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 easily win the counter ward ward against those supports. Just because Tango's now allows you to instantly kill the enemy counter ward. Exactly. I mean, Dust is very inefficient and ineffective against the. A Broodmother and the sentries are now something that he can manage very well with only a 200 gold investment. So, yeah, I really do like that. We're going to see a decent cast play out. A support battle actually going on bottom. But um, it looks like everybody's just going to be in full retreat here. The Disruptor being only level 1 is the big factor here. Some big numb oh. Maomi, they take a lot of damage. But uh, they'll just pretty much be giving Tiny free farm. Actually, Tusk getting caught out here a little bit might be the first blood. Yeah, they just run him down with a Wisp Tether, and they actually do get the kill on him. I mean, it looked like he was fine, and then I'm just like watching it. I'm like, he's going to be dropping lower and lower. We have another Thunderstrike coming in. And he also did, I think, not like the most expedient retreat in the world, uh, kind of hovering around that bottom river area for a bit too long. Um, and yeah, he ends up just feeding away the first blood. Big numb. Uh, I, I'm still not sure, like, this dual lane, the, the Tusk Witch Doctor, I don't expect them to win against the defensive tri lane by any means, but um, we'll see how good they end up doing. Oh, top lane, whoa, our Clockwork managed to pick off the Omni Knight, and Garter is actually too low and doesn't have the movement speed to catch up anyway, so, damn, 2-0 start out for Abraxas as they, wow, even a killing on the Invis rune. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, what? I mean, the webs aren't actually even there unless uh, they're graphically bugging out. I think Mind Control uh, reset his web position before he got to uh, the extra point in the spin web. So yeah. there's no risk for that being stolen by anybody about the clinks, but I mean, he just goes ahead, takes it out. He doesn't need it, that's for sure. And, but toss uh, back. Yeah. That one doesn't work. Tiny tried to go for the pick off from the Witch Doctor. Now they're going to be able to get their ice shards out. Now, our Witch Doctor already dropping loads of the combination. Will not be able to get the kill on the Wisp. Big Num now rotating his efforts to try and go for the tiny but that's not enough either 
So this clockwork's doing pretty well for himself. Two, one, and zero. Obviously, the mana burn knockback is a big deal against the Omni Knight's low mana pool, but he's actually just found come with me again inside the cogs. Battery assault, sure, you can go for the repel, but the animation allows him to get two more ticks of battery assault in, and he's still trading fine. He's got a bottle, but now he's 1v2, and that purification is going to deliver a lot of damage. It's going to be a number of searing arrows required, though, and they just don't have it. So it is going to be Pwn kind of going back and forth, but. Uh, it's all about the mana on the Omni Knight, I would say. If the Omni Knight has both his spells, Clockwork has to be worried now. But if, for example, Clockwork rocket flares off of Clarity and then grabs the top rune and refills the bottle, he's going to be in a good spot. Yeah, he actually managed to get a very aggressive cog setup. Um, what do you think about the early bottle pickup on Clockwork? Uh, I've experimented with this a couple times. I've, I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that unless... I just have so many ample opportunities to roam into the middle lane. It's just not worth it, solely because Clockwork tends to spend. He like he always spends time in lane. Like you can't actually yeah. push a Clockwork 100% out because no matter what, he'll always have something like cog blocking to be able to get himself. My control going for a very great, very aggressive jump here on Luffy. Almost enough damage, but unfortunately, just one last tick was left. But none of the spiders could actually catch up the disruptor. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Tusk managed to pick up a kill on the Wisp and is looking for a secondary one. Now onto the tiny, who's juking his way through the trees, but he's now spotted out. If he has to get out of that jungle area, the right-click damage is going to be enough. And Big Num secures himself a double kill, so some dropped uh, deaths there. And the bottom lane from Burton United is now easily recovered from one team fight. Yeah. I mean, right now, Mind Control's even cutting past the tower right now, just fearless in what he wants to accomplish here on the lane. And, and going back to your question about the bottle, I think it really comes down to the fact that he's up against an Omni Knight. Omni Knight is a really bad support to roam onto the runes, and is uh, really easy to pick off if he's that far away from tower. Like, we saw the repel help him out last time, but that thing only lasts so long. The Clockwork can pretty much run him down with the boots, uh, boots advantage. But we're actually going to see the Wisp Tether, given the move his PD needs. Uh, they don't have any detection on the Clinks, though. So it's just going to be a sustained movement for the clockwork and uh, maybe taking focus off of the tiny bottom. But yeah, I think the biggest problem with the bottle pickup, though, is my control is obviously very emphatic about the top rune. Like, he's got the webs all set up there. He's got his bottle early. He seems to be wanting to cover that up uh, about 90% of the time. And Pwn. Let's see. He's got... Uh... Still being pushed out, but he's got level four and a half here. Compare that to our other offlane, Tuscan Witch Doctor, level four and level five. So things actually going quite well for Burn United. Obviously, after that double kill that Big Num was able to grab, our Wisp was hoping to secure the top rune there, but Mind Control already making that rotation does get the bounty to start with. There's a haste rune at bottom lane, but we'll see who catches that one out. Wind Ranger is going to be picking up a little bit extra CS. His, his CS record is going to be a little deceptive solely because of the fact that uh, he will be picking up a lot of Spiderlings here, especially as that power, power shot starts getting leveled further and further. Yep, but we still see that early pointed focus fire, so if the Brood ever left the lane, then of course he can push the tower. This is one of the few matchups where I would say you actually don't have to get Wind Ranger's ultimate at level 6. It's because my control is always going to be in that lane. He's more dedicated to the lane than the clockwork in that top lane, and yeah, we're going to be seeing him very focused on pushing and keeping his tower alive. And actually going into the jungle briefly here, doesn't get the spawn spiderling unfortunately, so he's uh, just only getting so much out of that jungle position, but in the end, he's not going to let Wind Ranger really get any face time with the Ooh, Snowball, in order to save him for the time being, but it's only going to bring him into his own death, as sure enough, the Disruptor gets a really good kinetic field to make sure there's no escape, and they will end up dropping Big Numb, so big pick up there for the Tiny Wisp, making some recovery after their deaths earlier on, and uh, I'm sure a potent amount of experience for both of those supports as well. Yeah. So I'm actually curious when they're actually going to have a kill opportunity on the Broodmother. I'm sure against the Clinks, we're going to be seeing that when the hook shot's available and they can get one or two more on top of them. Actually, Luffy here will be able to get the Kinetic Field along with the Thunderstrike, but that spawn spiraling just does a little bit too much damage. My control finally going down to the Disruptor as he repeats out. Yeah, nice uh, nice snowball there. They're actually going to go for a secondary one as the spiders are surrounding the clockwork as well. And of course, that battery assault just means nothing. Really good cogs pushback, though. The spiders are still completely surrounding him, and he will go down over time unless he gets some amazing stout shield procs, and that is not the case between the spiders, their poison, and of course, that frozen sigil slowing down the clockwork. There was no hope of escape. Bignum manages to find even more now as he rotates around the map.
Yeah. And now look at bottom lane. Perfect opportunity for the clicks to push out. This could be the first tower going down. I mean, it's going to lose half its HP outright just from one Baldi uh, with strafe and searing arrows. And they could absolutely take this tower within the next 30 seconds if there is no rotation. Uh, clearing out the creep wave nicely. Tower is down to half. Gar just the clinks is so strong in this position around this level six, level seven mark, where he can just Radiant's siege down the tower, tower freely. But uh, Clockwork will be making his way up, trying to find level six, and then again he's going to look to get involved. Again, it's difficult to hook shot on the Broodmother. She's always got spiders to protect her, but the clinks might be an option if they can get one or two heroes up top. Yeah, just as it is right now, the Clockwork should never be able to get that solo. So as he said, they're going to need a rotation over. Witch Doctor is going to be caught here. Mind Control did make the rotation over. Unfortunately, the Witch Doctor is already dead. So instead, they're going to go for the Wisp. Walrus Punch up and turn him into Spiders. Ascendancy is going to have to back. Well, he actually starts going forward here as he now has the support of the Clockwork. But as you said, Broodmother is still a tough target to go for. And Clockwork actually didn't have his level 6. And now Luffy's going to run into Mind Control. Now they have a Shackle Shot to be able to laugh. Beautiful. Control will be picked off. So his aggression there in the bottom lane paid out in a quick kill on the Wisp. But as he tries to return back to the safety of his webs, he does get caught. All right. So now we're going to see the Clinks picking up a medallion of courage on this top lane. He's going to be looking to finish off this tier one tower. There's nothing like a relocate to respond to this. So it's going to be hard to really rally the troops up to the top lane. They might just have to let this tower go. And in fact, it's already gone. So Clinks starting to move forward really. We're actually seeing a dive on Tusk, though. He gets killed by the Avalanche. There's the top. And despite the snowball, he should be going down. Omni Knight, purification has to be perfect. It is, and the Wisp will actually be killed in turn. And Tiny, who had actually a toss coming up, doesn't have enough damage to kill Bingham by itself. There is, however, a full combination. Bingham's going to be turned around on. Bit too aggressive, perhaps, but Ascendancy will still fall as he tries to TP out. They are still buying so much room for always that top lane. Clinks did make the rotation to make sure that the Tiny died there, but now Come With Me is giving free farm time right in front of that Tier 2 tower. And, of course, as always, you're, you're eventually going to have to worry about that Broodminer. Now look at what they're doing with the clock. Work. I'm not sure if he realizes it yet, but uh, he can't actually throw out the hook shot. He's going to go for it now. Oh, perfect setup. Mind control just completely hook blocked that poor clockwork. Yeah, that really <laughs> bites the dust. For That's the tempo controlling skill, too. That's the one where every single one, you want to be able to accomplish something with it. But the stance like that from Mind Control, you can see that he, he has the full intention of making this clockwork half useless uh, with those fighters. So we'll see if he can pull it off uh, just as well again. But I, I really want to focus a bit on this clinks here. We're going to see come with me in some trouble. Looks like he's going to be caught out without a TP. But the repel will... We'll give him a little bit more time. He'll make it back to a safer position before Clockwork starts hitting him with a uh, few spells. After the shock shot, though, on Broodmother, that's a pickup they cannot afford, and they're going to be losing a lot there as the server uh, bugs out a little bit. Yeah, that was definitely some awkward lag. Our Broodmother does go down, I think, either way. Like, right as he tried to show himself there with the webs, it was uh, immediate dust and, and shackle shot. So, in a way, he does save our Omni Knight. Uh, come with me does uh, manage to get away, it seems, as our clockwork already using the hook shot earlier. Won't be able to catch him. They're going to try and clean up some of these uh, spiders real quickly. Do get a couple of them. And that's about it. Big Num is rotating over, but there's a lot of heroes grouped up here from ABX, and Big Num is more of a pickoff kind of guy. He's repelled up, and there are spiders moving across to go for the Wisp, but not enough. And if anything, these spiders are just going to be farmed up by the clockwork and the Wisp, mm -hmm. so. Quick kills there. Garter is aggressively pushing forward into the enemy jungle, though. Consuming that with Death Pact and clearing through the rest of the smaller creeps. You do have an Ascendancy as well as Speed making their way over, trying to make that clear through. They do have another Dust. But it doesn't look like they're going to find the pick off. And if anything, there's a Radiance lot of Burn United grouping up. Seems attack. like they're ready to make a full engage in the jungle. Yeah, I mean, they know the time is forming the wave right now. Uh, she doesn't have an easy way of getting back to that fight. Luffy might get caught out here. We'll pop one. He's going around for one second. He's going to lose a lot of blood HP. 
Yeah, Quick Shackles on the side. They do go for the Witch Doctor, but nice save there with the Snowball. Actually dodges the damage. Now the Omni Guy pops that ultimate with the Witch Doctor on top of it. Hookshot managed to catch out Mind Control. is trying to get away from this pesky Clockwork. Manages to get the heals up and will turn around on the Clockwork to get the quick kill. Two down on the side of ABX. Tower down, and it looks like they're going to go perhaps take that middle tier one tower in the process now that they've gotten so much control out. They might actually be able to go for ropes. They do have a medallion. I mean, I actually think they're with the frozen sigil and the medallion, there's some good potential for them whenever they get one good pick off to turn it into Roche. Um, but they're just going to take the tier one first. Now and come with me. But they need to turn this into more. They need to turn this into at least one tower and also get their lane creepilibrium back under control because right now there's creeps in the base, there's creeps pushing down the lanes, and they need to... Uh, set that back the other way. They did get a little lucky with their past couple of sentries. They used them just to try to find the brute mother, but do you see this kind of like line of sentries stretched out here? These five sentries actually got two very nice observer wards away from Bird United, and they're actually going to be lacking vision for their next offensive play. Well, Tal's are tiny doing. He's suppose like Sulkiras definitely the next pickup. There's no other item that we we would see. Uh, yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, there's not. I mean, BKB is okay, but it's it's not going to be doing enough. So AC is pretty much the go-to. Yeah. Oh, well, relocate. They're actually going to get the pick off on the Witch Doctor, but they got current stage. I, I think that Wind Ranger played a really good game here, but in the end, it just was a numbers issue. They didn't have the farm. Uh, Bird and United were able to fight and farm at the same time. They had complete Roche control, and they were able to end the game at a really good time.